open colectomy. What is this procedure and how is it performed? A colectomy is the removal of a portion of your colon or large intestine that is diseased. This is performed through a skin incision or cut that is made on your abdomen while you are under general anesthesia, meaning you are unconscious and pain-free. The diseased colon and its blood supply are then removed. Typically, the ends are then sewn or stapled back together to make a functioning digestive system again. Occasionally, the ends cannot be brought back together again, and a stoma is created. This brings the beginning part of the intestine up to skin level, and the stool empties into a drainage bag called a stoma appliance. This may be temporary, and the colon can be placed together again with another operation. Typically, you will have a bowel prep, which will clean out all of your intestines, if this is not an emergent procedure. This cleanses your colon and decreases the risk of infection after surgery. Why is this procedure performed? In general, colectomies are performed to remove a portion of the colon that is not healthy. There may be cancer in that portion, or it may have a perforation or hole, or inflammation leading to blockage or abscess. The causes can be due to diverticulitis, inflammatory bowel disease, or other less common disease processes. Depending on the cause, you could be symptom free, or you might have abdominal pain, fever, loss of appetite, or blood in your stool. What should I expect after surgery? After the surgery, you will be given pain medication to keep you comfortable. You will have a urinary catheter, a tube placed in the bladder to collect urine, placed in the operating room that will come out in several days. You will not eat right away, and patients often feel nauseated from the medications and anesthesia. When your surgeon hears bowel sounds, you will be slowly started on a diet and then advance to your previous diet over the next several days. You will be encouraged to move after surgery as soon as possible. This decreases your risk of lung complications and clots in your legs. Bowel movements may not occur for several days after the surgery, and seeing some blood in the first bowel movements is normal. You will be unable to lift heavy objects greater than 15 pounds for six weeks after surgery. The dressing will be removed in the hospital, and typically you will be able to shower when the dressing is removed. You will be unable to drive a car while you are on painkillers, and you will typically spend five to seven days in the hospital. What are the risks and complications of this procedure? Just as there may be benefits to the procedure proposed, medical and surgical procedures also involve risks. These risks include allergic reaction, bleeding, blood clots, infections, adverse side effects of drugs, blindness, and even loss of bodily function or life, as well as the risks of transfusion reactions and the transmission of infectious disease, including hepatitis, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, from the administration of blood or blood components. There are particular risks associated with this procedure. These risks include but are not limited to wound infection, fevers, undue pain, redness, drainage or swelling at the incision site, urinary tract infection or retention. Any foreign body such as a urinary catheter poses a risk for infection. Incisional hernia. Bulging or a mass through the incision may be a sign. Refraining from strenuous activity for six weeks after surgery is important for adequate healing of the tissues. Blockage of the intestines. Scar tissue or adhesions form after almost every surgical procedure. Adhesions typically begin to form within the first few days after surgery, 
but they may not produce symptoms for months or even years. As scar tissue begins to restrict motion of the small intestines, passing food through the digestive system becomes progressively more difficult. The bowel may become blocked. Less common complications are stricture or hernia at the stoma site. The bowel edge must come through the abdominal wall to the skin surface. If the opening is too small, a stricture may develop, making it difficult for stool to go into the ostomy appliance. If the opening is too large, the intestines can bulge or herniate through the opening. Delay in return of bowel function. When the abdomen is opened, as in a colectomy, the intestines temporarily stop their normal forward movement, called peristalsis. Typically, two to three days following surgery, bowel function will return. When this is delayed, patients may feel bloated and nauseated. Early ambulation after surgery may assist in the return of this function. Anastomatic leak. Rarely, the reconnection of the intestines can leak. Injury to the ureter. This connects the kidney to the bladder and it can be inadvertently cut or injured during the procedure. Hemorrhage. Bleeding may occur from the blood vessels that supply the colon. Injury to spleen. This organ is in close proximity to the left portion of the large intestine. Traction at this area can cause the splenic capsule to tear and lead to bleeding. Before you agree to any operative procedure, it is important to remember that each patient is different and that the outcome of any surgical procedure can never be guaranteed. You should understand that there may be complications that have not been mentioned and that it is not possible to anticipate all complications or to answer each and every question. Again, you should be aware that in the practice of medicine, unforeseen and unexpected risks or complications not previously discussed may occur. You should also understand that during the course of proposed procedures, unforeseen conditions may be revealed requiring the performance of additional procedures, and such procedures may need to be performed. Keep in mind that there is no substitute for an open and honest discussion with your own surgeon or physician regarding this procedure. You should also be given any available treatment alternatives to this procedure by your doctor, some of which may include medication. Be sure to discuss any questions or concerns with your doctor.